Graduates, it has taken years of hard work and accomplishment to reach this milestone. However, I suspect that it's also true that the support of family and friends has been crucial to your success. If you are a family member, member or friend of one of our graduates today, would you please stand up? <laughs> graduates, let's give a big thank you. <laughs> thank you, you may be seated. And of course, as you suspect, an event like this is never, never happens without a lot of behind the scenes hard work. I'd like to ex uh, especially express appreciation to uh, members of our staff and student volunteers who've worked very hard to make this uh, possible. Uh, particularly, I'd like to thank uh, Ms. Kim Orlowski. Um, there, thank you, Kim. And also, if you are a member of staff or a student volunteer, if you're a standing wave, if you're a sitting stand, and let's uh, just say a thank you to you also. Thank you again for making this possible. Those of you who have seen some, some of the Superman movies know that he has a secret hideaway somewhere in the Arctic. But before Superman, there was Doc Savage. If you remember or know who Doc Savage is, would you raise your hand? Okay, good. We've got a few aficionados here. Wikipedia outlines his biography as follows. Doc Savage's real name was Clark Savage, Jr. He was a physician, surgeon, scientist, adventurer, inventor, explorer, researcher, and musician who righted wrongs and punished evildoers. A team of scientists assembled by his father deliberately trained his mind and body to near superhuman abilities almost from birth, giving him great strength and endurance, a photographic memory, a mastery of the martial arts, and vast knowledge of the sciences. Doc's character and worldview are displayed in his oath, which begins as follows. Let me strive every moment of my life to make myself better and better to the best of my ability that all may profit by it. His office was on the 86th floor of a New York City skyscraper, implicitly the Empire State Building, reached by Doc's private high-speed elevator. He sometimes retreated to his fortress of solitude in the Arctic, which predates Superman's similar hideout of the same name. Savage worked with five additional characters in his adventures, Monk Mayfair, an industrial chemist, Ham Brooks, an accomplished attorney, Rennie Renwick, a construction engineer, Long Tom Roberts, an electrical engineer, and Johnny Littlejohn, an archaeologist and geologist. When I was a boy and discovered Doc Savage, the notion of periodically retreating to a fortress of solitude for study and research and then returning to rescue the world from villains sounded like a very attractive lifestyle. I'm wondering, what is your reaction to the notion of retreating to a fortress of solitude? As a boy, I found that I was strongly attracted to this notion, almost with a sense of longing. Many years later, I came to understand this in terms of my personality type. I'm an introvert. Whereas extroverts are energized by being with people, introverts gain strength from solitude. While there are many engineers who are extroverted, I believe it's more common for engineers to be introverted. This preference for solitary activities such as reading, writing, programming, has been twisted to support the notion of being a nerd. However, being an introvert does not mean that you must be socially inept. As Doc Savage demonstrated, introverts can be socially attractive people, effective leaders, and effective members of interdisciplinary teams. Although Western society generally values extroversion over introversion, I challenge those of you who are introverts to take pride in the ways that you can help change the world by bringing the strength that you gain in solitude to bear on important problems. In keeping with Doc Savage's credo, 
I hope each of you will strive every moment of your lives to make yourselves better and better to the best of your ability that all may profit by it. Although this graduation for many of you uh, marks a departure for NC, from NC State, it's really just the beginning of a lifelong relationship. It's very important for us to keep in touch because as the NC State ECE department increases in stature, the value of your degree increases. And let's face it, when you are successful, it makes us look good. It's our hope that closing this positive feedback loop will cause the output to increase rapidly and without bound. This symbiotic relationship is important to us both. And with regard to keeping in touch, I can also attest to the fact that there are few things that professors enjoy more than hearing from former students. With that, I'm happy to conclude our ceremony. I'd like to ask that you um, remain seated while the faculty recess. Uh, I'd like to ask guests to remain seated while the graduates recess. And then following that, I would like to invite everyone for a reception directly across the exit doors to your right in rooms three, four, and five. Let's hear it one more time for the class of fall 2013. <laughs>